Hey guys, before this video starts, I just want to iterate that I use the DJI Osmos Pocket 3. And a lot of the times I was aiming the camera where I wanted to film, but the stupid gimbal was horizon locking. So rather than following the camera's motion, it was pointing straight ahead. And I lost a lot of the footage that I wanted to show you guys because this camera has no setting to lock the gimbal forward like my old Osmos Pocket 1, which is very annoying and they need to fix that. So hopefully they do. Anyway, onward to the show where we put a bigger power supply in an Acer Nitro 50. <laughs> Hey yo guys, what's good, what's happening, and what's going on? I went to Best Buy on New Year's Eve after work. We got out at two, and I purchased some stuff. One of them was this hard drive case to attempt to clone my 256 gig uh, Samsung 970 to a two terabyte 990. The clone worked, but turns out the B350 killer fatality board doesn't support it. So that project went down the hole. Not a big deal, we'll recover. Got a good deal on that SSD, so I'm not too worried. But however, I did also buy an 850 watt power supply. Not for the editing computer. This is for the Acer Loser Nitro Suck Face. Mainly because I want to put a bigger power supply in there. Right now it has a 500 watt power supply. And I have this feeling that the problem with that computer is that the 500 watt power supply just doesn't provide enough juice to run everything smoothly. I noticed uh, last night we did a stream with the old crew, uh, Stuffs, Tractor Head, Chuch, Ozzy was even there and we played Grand Theft Auto and that the games ran fine, but I noticed that the card never went above 90 watts usage and the 4060 should be able to do 115 watts. So I figured what's happening is the motherboard is starving the card and the card is underpowered. So I figured, you know what? It's not the first time I've seen that problem. And it's because everything runs off. On the Acer Loser Nitro Suckface, the Acer Nitro 50 series, everything runs off the motherboard. It uses a weird power supply. I showed this in the past videos where instead of having a 24 pin ATX, you have a six pin 12 VO. So what that does is it sends 12 volts all to the motherboard and the motherboard does all the power management. So you have leads coming off the motherboard that go to the video card to power the video card. You have leads coming off the motherboard to power any SATA drives you may have. If you have like an old platter drive, or uh, SSD in your computer uh, that runs on SATA. You have leads that plug into the motherboard to power it. It's a horrible setup, but a lot of these pre-builds are coming this way. However, I found a cable online to rectify the 24 pin to six pin, and people have said that it worked on the Acer Nitro 50s, and the cable can handle up to a thousand watts. Now, think of this, when you put an 850 watt power supply or a thousand watt power supply or a 1500 watt power supply. It's not like a light bulb. It doesn't constantly draw 1500 watts. It will make up to 1500 watts. But if you're not using your computer, let's say your computer's on and idling, it'll not shut down, but it'll undervolt the, the video card. It'll undervolt the processor. It'll lower power consumption. But then when you get into stuff like, oh, I don't know, Bitcoin mining or AI constructs or video gaming and that where you're really stressing the hardware out, then it's going to push stuff a little harder and draw more power. So you're not constantly using 850 watts. You're not constantly using 1,000 watts. The power is there when needed, but when not needed, it's not used. So don't treat your power supply like a light bulb. Don't think because you put an 850 watt power supply in there, you're now consuming 850 watts uh, every hour. You're basically, the power is available to be used when needed. So my biggest concern is the Acer Loser Nitro Suck Face has a small chassis. So in this box of power supplies, they give you, it's a modular power supply. So in this bag is all the different cables. And you know what? We might be okay. I was expecting this power supply to be a lot bigger, but it's just the box. This is the power supply that we're using. It is a thermal take, heavy as frig, 850 watts, fully modular, which is what I was looking for, was a fully modular design. The fan does not operate if the power supply is in low loads. Well, whatever. So it has a smart fan on it. It says so on the back here. If you can read that. And of course they put the sticker over top of the damn power. 
This one here does not have an EU slash other option. It's strictly 120 volts input, right? Yes. Or no, it's auto switching. Never mind. It is EU compatible. It's 100 to 240 volts, so it auto detects and modifies. It's got seven amps on the 12 volt rail, which is awesome. And what's really good about this one here is it has the adapter, because I want to put a bigger video card in that computer over time. I want to put like a 4070 in there and it has the ATX right here. It has the power supply. So you don't have to monkey around and get an adapter to convert two of these guys here into one of those. You can just plug and play and away you go. So that's pretty sweet. Now, my biggest concern is, will this power supply work with my adapter cable? Wow, what a mess. Okay, this is a mess. I don't even know. This is like, it's like they just took all the cables and bundled them together. I need to unravel this and see what the heck is in here. This can't be one cable. This has to be multiple cables. This is, in fact, multiple cables. So we got some... 8 pin to 8 pins. Are these labeled? No, why would they? PCIe. Okay, yeah, these are labeled. All right. Okay, this is the CPU one. Perfect. I don't know why it's doubled up, but we have two CPUs on this one here. Not sure what's going on there, but sure, we're going to need that. And this is the 24 pin to what goes into the this guy. So this should connect in like so. And this one here should connect in like so. And then this one here should connect my wire that I have for the Acer Loser Nitro Suck Face. Let me go get that wire and we'll see if it works. So here's the wire. Uh, should only go in one, one direction, I believe. Let me just make sure on that. Does not fit, does fit. So this connects to the 24 pin and this six point lead goes into your motherboard to power your board. The only disgusting part about this is look at how much cable I now have to manage. That's not going to be fun. The Acer Loser Nitro Suck Face may start looking like a spaghetti mess, but I'm okay with that. Now here is the other problem I'm going to have is here's the power supply here. There's my new power supply sitting beside it. As you can see, maybe you can't, this cage is kind of sort of in the way. So we're gonna have some fun moving stuff around to try and get it to work. But as you see up there, there's the six pin up there that comes off of the power supply. There's an, uh, a power uh, thing up there that powers the main board. It's an eight pin CPU. And I'm not seeing any other leads attached to the motherboard, so we're going to have some fun routing wires because unlike bigger cases, I can't really funnel these behind the metal plate because the metal plate on the back is actually the case cover and taking that off reveals nothing. So there's no way to manage these cables. So this is going to be a disgusting mess when I'm done, but I will have an 800 watt power supply in here and then I could jam a bigger video card in. I'm just going to need some way to support it. And that's where the 3D printer might come up clutch. Now, if I don't have enough room, because as you can see, the wires are coming out right here on the power supply. They come out right there and then they get funneled up. So I was wrong about that, guys, when I said that there's a lead coming off the board powering the video card. The lead is actually coming out of the power supply, but I might not have enough room with this cage here, which might require me to drill some rivets or something to get that out of the way. Well, what I'm going to start doing right now is I'm going to go ahead and shut this machine down. We'll get it up on the desktop. We'll start ripping components out and see how we can do this. I don't need this cage. I don't have any hard drives installed. And I don't plan on putting any in here. So let's get after it. Alrighty, so I've gone ahead and taken the video card out because it's in the way. And it looks like they got some sort of a plastic or something holding the wire on. They really don't want you to upgrade this thing. So I'm going to have to cut that. Whatever the hell that is. Looks like it's some sort of a tape. Leave it the Acer, man. I tell you. Bunch of nerds. All right. And then there's some sort of a plastic clip here, which is holding the wire in place too. And it doesn't seem to come apart. Oh, it does come apart. It unlocks. Okay. All right, so that comes out like that. 
All right, so that frees up the motherboard. And then we just need to free up the CPU one, which has a bunch of those clips, and it's up here. So I'm just going to do that because I need two hands, and I'll be with you in a minute. All righty, I got the wires out. That one was a pain in the ass, um, but it came out. So the power supply right now is just sitting here. It's going to pop some screws. I discovered that there's two screws back here holding this cage on, but then after further inspection, it seems that there's a bunch more underneath. Now, I don't know if those are screws or rivets. If they're rivets, I'll drill them out, but that cage is coming out and going away. I don't need it. It's going to get in the way of the wires probably. We'll try without taking it out, but I have a feeling it's going to be a problem. So I just need a couple screws in the back here to pull the old power supply out, and then we'll slap the new power supply in and then start cable management, which is going to be impossible. All right, so if you're wondering what the stock power supply is, it's a chickeny 500 watt. Yup, nothing fancy. Straight up OEM. And now we got a huge hole, so that's awesome. I'm gonna do a little cleanup in here, a little wipe down, clean up that grill so that I can suck air from the bottom of my desk a little more conveniently, and then get the new power. Actually, I'm gonna take a look and see about taking this cage out. I'm gonna get rid of it. I could use it for cable management, but I could also just get rid of it. And I think that's the better idea. So yeah, it does appear that they did rivet it to the actual case, just like they did the back panel. Like you can't take off the back plate. It's all riveted. Everything's riveted. Welcome to the wonderful world of pre-built computers, guys. Um, yeah, this is what you get involved in. You want to mod them, but it's not exactly easy. So I have the option of taking off this rubber foot to expose the rivets, drilling them out, then extracting that cage. That's the only real option I have. And as far as I can tell from in here, that's the only thing holding them in place is some rivets. So I thought those two screws would have helped it slide off, but unfortunately that is not the case. Well, you know what? I might leave it in there. Let's see how bad the fitment is with the new power supply. You know what guys, we might be okay. We might be okay. And I could probably use that cage if there was a big hole in the side to route things through. It's gonna be a mess in here, but I really don't give a care. All right, I'm gonna take the power supply back out, start routing some cables, and then we'll hook things up, plug it in and uh, watch it catch fire. Alrighty, so like I said, cable management guys, I'm working with a pre-built. There ain't gonna be any cable management. These little bread ties they attach to the board are way too small to route cables through. Well, these thick ass cables anyway. Um, I thought we were done with ribbon cables, but apparently that's not the case anymore. I uh, got the CPU plugged in, got the 12VO plugged in, just got to reinstall the video card, plug that in, and then fire it up and see how well it works. I was thinking about getting a PCI Express uh, USB card, but that's not going to happen. This board is way too small to fit such a thing. So yeah, problematic. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stove the video card back in. We'll hook that up and then we'll plug it back into power and turn it on and see if we got a fire on our hands. All right guys, we got everything loaded back in uh, on the new Tough Power 850 watt. We'll see if this little case can hold it. If it can, that means I can get away from the 4060 and go to a 4070 or 4080, whatever I want for this gaming rig and have potential, plenty of power to handle it. So without further ado, let's get this thing plugged back in and see if we got ourselves a house fire, especially because I'm relying on a cable purchased from Amazon. That was like, I think 14 bucks to get this job done. Let's try. All right, survey says, wait, I know what the problem is. There's a toggle switch on the back of this thing. It's powering up. Do we get the Acer? Mouse is on, mouse is off. Mouse is back on, keyboard's on. We got a post beep, no display. There, oh my goodness, guys. It's actually freaking working. And we don't have a forest fire. We have upgraded from 500 watts to 850 watts of 12 VO power. This monitor always takes a while to turn on because I got to use some weird box to make it work. However, we are logged back in to the gaming system with plenty of power remaining. This is awesome. So I'll post a link in the description 
of where I got the cable from to do this to your computer. If you have one of these Acer Nitros, I know this is the older one. This is last year's model. So it's got the 13400F. Yours might have the 14400F with the 4060 because that deal was back on again on Boxing Day, uh, $899 for the computer. And it came with a terabyte of hard drive space, um, 16 gigs of RAM, the 14400F and a 4060. The weak point is the 4060. You will get by if you play simple games like Fortnite and all that. But when you get into games like Red Dead Redemption, you start getting VRAM problems. You start getting desyncing problems. You start getting just random frame rate drops. And it's because the 4060 was built kind of cheap. Uh, it sits in a PCI 16 lane slot, only uses eight of those 16 lanes. It's got 128 bit memory bus. It's got eight gigs of VRAM. It's just all around better than onboard graphics, but honestly, it's kind of potato. 115 watts is what it caps out at. Now it should be able to handle a lot more because it's got a little bit more overhead to play with. So it shouldn't get so stoved out. And my next thing to do is to find a video card that'll fit inside this small form factor chassis to give it a little bit more jam. And I'm probably gonna have to 3D print a leg to keep the video card from, you know, sagging and ripping the PCI Express port out of the board. Because if that happens, this computer is basically done. So on that note, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, new power supply in a pre-built system. It's just that simple. All you need is a cable. And if you wanna buy that cable, like I said, I'll post a link in the description. It's gonna be for amazon.ca, but you can just remove the CA after Amazon and put com and find it in America. Or if you're in Europe or Australia, just add your geographical tag to it for your Amazon. And if the cable's available in your location, it should just bring up the, the item. If not, just look at the link I post and try and search for that same thing on your Amazon, find the cable, and then you too should be able to upgrade your Acer Loser Nitro Suckface to take something better than the pre-built crap they stoved into it in the, in the first place. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click that like button. Any questions, comments, concerns, down below they go. And until next time, guys, live the win it and peace the frig out. Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.